All right, this case um, is about uh, sugar in colonial America, in particular Philadelphia, and how it's used and consumed. Really, up until about 1850, sugar was an elite uh, treat. It was not available to the masses. It was quite expensive to procure because of the long distances, um, the processes, the hand processes of uh, refining sugar that we discussed earlier uh, were costly. Even though this was uh, slave labor, uh, the merchants were the ones profiting and they were bringing it to a wealthy clientele. So in this case, um, we can see sugar nippers from the uh, early 19th century. They're wrought iron and any a good housewife would have had a pair of these um, at the ready to clip sugar uh, from the cone and there's a wrapped uh, reproduction of a wrapped sugar cone um, done up in a Philadelphia newspaper to uh, keep the moisture from getting to it. And so you would, you would clip off a lump essentially and then put it in one of these receptacles. This is a China Trade uh, porcelain uh, sugar bowl or sugar box as these are known um, by the the world of historians and museum culture. This is in the collection of the Independent Seaport Museum. Um, over here you'll see two very special uh, silver sugar boxes from the 18th century. Um, one of these is made by Philip Singh Jr. Uh, and let me start over on that. Oh, okay. Just that part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, over here, you're going to see some very fancy sugar boxes and tongs uh, lent to us uh, kindly by the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So this is known as a, a sugar box. This was made about 1785 by Daniel Dupuy uh, Jr. Um, who worked um, in the old city area of Philadelphia. You can actually see this, we've taken the top off um, to show the hammer marks of the inside. This is completely hand wrought of solid uh, silver. Uh, this is from the federal period. Um, and you can see the front of it shows the engraved fancy monogram of the owner. Uh, the urn form was a reference to um, neoclassicism, which during the federal period, um, Americans um, were referencing as we developed into our own nation and uh, referencing the Greek and Roman classical tradition for inspiration in our new republic. A pair of sugar tongs here by Philip Singh Jr. Um, we were very happy to have the museum loan us. Um, these, these are important because um, Philip Singh Jr. had his uh, silver smithery on Front Street, uh, right near High Street, or what is now known as Market Street, and he is most famous for creating the uh, inkwell used to sign the Declaration of Independence, as well as uh, the U.S. Constitution. He was a friend of Benjamin Franklin and many other delegates um, at the Constitutional Conventions. So he made these probably about 1760. Uh, over here you'll see another uh, sugar box, this with a pineapple finial. Uh, the pineapple is uh, representative of welcome and of course this gracing the table of a wealthy Philadelphian at the time would have showed their guests uh, good taste and that they had plenty of sugar of course for tea but also that their guests were welcome. Uh, the pineapple is also a reference to uh, the Caribbean where 
uh, the cane, of course, and of course uh, where the sugar comes from as well. This is an earlier sugar box. Uh, this is a, a late uh, Chippendale 1783 and also retains the engraved monogram of its owner. These tongues are of a different style, um, whereas the scissor tongues by Philip Singh Jr. show an earlier style from the 1750s or 60s. This is uh, by the same silversmith, done a little bit later, 1770s. Uh, finally, in the case, uh, the last item I'd like to bring to your attention is the cobalt glass uh, sugar bowl fragment. This was probably made by the Stiegel Glass Works of Mannheim, Pennsylvania, um, made around 1800. This is the base only. There would have been a lid. Um, the reason we asked to borrow this uh, from the State Museum of Pennsylvania is that it was actually excavated when they were doing the I-95 uh, improvements along the highway within the past year or two. Uh, these fr fragments or shards were found and pieced back together. So it actually came from the, the riverfront um, very close to where we are here. Different styles of serving sugar in the um, early period of our country's history.